Well, I've had a very long time to think about what my first words will be to Rosebank Union Church pretty much since end of November last year. I've been thinking about what I would say, so it better be good, right? But I think I knew pretty early on what those words should be, and they are thank you. Thank you to Rosebank Union Church. It it has not eluded me for one second just what an incredible privilege it is to be called here as your senior pastor, having sat in the front here with these giants of the past, having read and learned just a little bit of the heritage of Rosebank Union, of the increasing fruitfulness that it's had for over a hundred years. It is an awesome privilege and I want to thank you for it. But there is a, another church that I want to thank as well that, that has been mentioned this morning, a church that I said a, a rather emotional goodbye to just over a month ago, another church that has an incredible heritage of fruitfulness on the eastern side of Johannesburg, uh, the church that I started my ministry at, was given the opportunity, a church that absorbed my learning curve, so now I'm good, right? Just kidding. Um, A church where I met, Kristen, where we met, where we had our kids, not an easy uh, church to leave. And And I said this was my last words to Edenville Baptist, were the same as my first words to Rosebank Union, but I want to say it again. Thank you. And I could go on, so many thank yous. For example, just the many mentors, coaches, spiritual directors that I've had in my life up till this point without which I wouldn't be here. Some of them here today, some couldn't be here today. Friends, supporters, colleagues along the way. My new colleagues, I want to say thank you to to Justin and the team. I've had two weeks in the office already. And as I've kind of been journeying since being called to Rosebank and realized, I think Rosebank Union owes a debt of gratitude to the staff of this church and to the leaders who led so courageously during this time of transition last year. I don't think many people will know what a specialized ministry it is to be an interim senior pastor and Justin has done an incredible job and he's made... Justin has made my transition to Rosebank Union far easier already than I would have ever have anticipated. I also want to, of course, say thank you to my wife, who is far stronger than anyone will ever know. She looks all pretty and little, as she is, but she's far stronger than anybody knows. She's not here in this country primarily because of me, at least that's what I hoped in the beginning, Um, and not because of the country as beautiful as South Africa is. She's here because of the mission of God. And so I want to thank you for standing beside me. I could go on, but I guess this is starting already to sound a little bit like an Oscars acceptance speech, which it is not. But I really did want to start by saying thank you. And of course, I want to say thank you to Jesus Christ. I I could not exist today apart from the grace of Jesus. I could not have been called into pastoral ministry if not for the grace of Jesus. I could not have been called to this church if not for the grace of Jesus, and I have no hope of doing any kind of good job apart from the grace of Jesus. Amen. 
There's a verse that's been important to me for a little while that I think encapsulates this. And it's also, I wanted to share that with you this morning because it's a little bit of a window into the things that I love the most. Romans 5 verse 1 to 2 says, Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of God's glory. I know that that Rosebank has been exposed to a lot of phenomenal preaching on the book of Romans. I I looked it up and I've seen that the book of Romans has been preached on more than any other book apart from the Gospels. And so if you're paying attention when Lee preached on this, and if you remember, it would be pretty heroic if you did, but if you remember, what makes this passage so interesting It's because it comes at one of the turning points in the book. The focus up to this point has been all about the power of the gospel to restore us in our broken relationship with God, which is beautiful. But the focus after it is about the results of that restoration. So what it means now for the life that we live now after we have believed. And I love that. And you're going to hear a lot about the gospel of Jesus and what that means in restoring the brokenness between us and God, but also a lot about what that means for our daily lives here and now. And so you're going to hear lots about things like peace, which is really important right now. I mean, especially today. Everyone listening Christian, non-Christian, everybody hungers for peace with all that's going on around us. This virus has in one way shown us how globally connected we are. Kristen was just telling me this morning her family are in the States and she had a phone call with them last night and it's kind of one of the first times that we've been able to go through something together with them, which is Remarkable how globally connected we are, but also how universal our fears are. What's interesting about this word peace, though, here in the Bible, is when we think about peace, we generally tend to think, what is peace? Well, peace is the absence of hostility. In other words, peace time would be the absence of war. And so we would think of peace in light of current anxieties, it'd be when finally coronavirus subsides, then then that will be peace. But that's not really the picture given in the Bible around this word peace. It's so much bigger than that. The Bible uses this word peace to describe a sense of harmonious well-being that exists despite crazy things going on around us. In other words, a sense of wellness even if you are not well. See, I'm not sure that we're promised the kind of peace that the world hopes for as in the absence of difficulty. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's not what we're promised because just the next verse in this passage says we rejoice in our suffering. And as crazy as that sounds, it's only possible because we've been granted access by faith into this grace in which we stand. You're going to hear me talk a lot about grace that gives us access to God, for sure, but also the grace in which we now stand. God's grace is bigger even than just how he views us. It is a state of being. What I, what I mean is this. Oftentimes, as Christians, I think when we think about grace, we think about God's grace as having been poured out upon us when we became believers, and then kind of a closes off. So we received grace when we came to believe in Jesus Christ, but now we're kind of on our own. Whereas this grace in which we stand is this idea of grace that drew us to Jesus, showed us Jesus, showed us who we are, but a grace that continues to pour upon us, a grace in which we can stand that gives peace, that even gives hope no matter what's happening around us. It's that grace in which I now stand. It's that grace that has sustained Rosebank Union Church for 114 years. And it's that grace that will sustain us in the future. Amen? So speaking of the future, where do we think God, by his grace, might lead us as a church? Well, at this point, I just have one picture for you. And it's a picture that... that 
came to me long before there was anything to do with Rosebank and a call. I always wondered what it would apply to. So in situations like this, pastoral transitions and even in secular sort of business transitions, you know, people would often say, no one said this to me, but people would often say things like this. They would say, so are you going to fix this ship and turn it around? You might have heard that before. And so if you're going to ask me that question, I'll tell you the answer. I would say to you, well, no. At least that's, that's not what's captivating my thoughts and my heart at this point. I mean, to be sure, I know there's, there's, there's a lot of work to do here, but this is a pretty good ship. Thanks to the hard work I've just mentioned, the people here and the guys who've labored for 40 years past. In fact, this is a great ship. What I think we need to do is to lift the sail. That's why I made that difficult decision those months ago in deciding to come here. I wanted to see what would happen if this church, if a church like Rosebank Union, if it could really lift the sail and allow God to blow and send us it's a marvelous ship. It's marvelous things Rosebank's been doing. My primary job isn't to fix anything. It's to lift the sail. And I really sense that. That's my prayer. And I think that in a little while, we're all going to have to hold on real tight. So Rosebank, let's lift the sail together. Amen. Terry Ray is going to pray for us as a church now.